what's going on guys so you may or may not know uh but my training my priority for training really or my interest in, in training really is to train for size primarily like bodybuilding and uh, besides that strength and conditioning maybe a little bit here and there but yeah to look good and to be strong that's that's what i prefer and that's what i base my training and my education around that that's what i'm passionate about and that's where i want to work in and what i work with my clients with as well so anyway so this this video is about a training program that i made for myself so this isn't necessarily for clients because um, you guys are mostly beginners to intermediate so you, you may not find this uh, interesting well actually you may find it interesting you just may not be able to apply this right now for yourself but this is really for other personal trainers or other power lifters bodybuilders or anyone else that, that basically wants um, a look into uh, the science of what's happening in, in 2018 and because I've, I've been um, this, this this training program basically i've been thinking about making it for the past two months i made it like two days ago but yeah i've been studying about all this kind of stuff for the past decade or so so um this is the most updated knowledge that i currently have and the pr the principles and everything that i've currently understood that I'm, I'm applying into a bodybuilding program for myself for the next five months so i'm going to show you the entire thing the entire breakdown of absolutely everything that i'm doing i know that the camera is on the left hand side now i can't see it because i'm recording but you guys will be able to see me so i'm gonna have to move this um from top to bottom so this this was my rough word document that i made for myself and then i made like an online uh note form with color and everything so i can explain things much better um every single thing that i'm going to mention in this in this video every single topic i will try and uh, link references resources or just at least give you guys the names and, and links to the videos of the people that have been the, uh, that are the the talking points or the main points the backing of how i've been making this program so you will be able to verify absolutely everything that i'm talking about but let's uh, let's get into it so uh, just, uh, trying to design the optimal bodybuilding program the optimal bodybuilding program now optimal is something that you can never really achieve uh, it's something that you're trying to get the best off so so what i really try and go for is like realistic optimal as opposed to theoretical optimal so this is the, the best uh, theoretical that can be practically applied so practical optimal for everything right uh, you need to have good nutrition for a bodybuilding program and we know that so uh, i'm assuming that i'm going to be able to keep up with it for the next five months this is a training block that i made a program I made for the next five months and i'm going to keep following so um so here's the basics of what i was thinking when i was thinking about designing the program so i, I might um i was thinking about using rpe which is Mike Tushers, I've actually not even mentioned that down here, but I'll mention that at some point. Um, so Mike Tushers, auto regulation, which is uh, a rate of perceived exertion. If you guys don't know who he is, he's amazing. Uh, he's an amazing strength coach. Uh, Google his name and the RPE system, and you'll find out what RPE is and how to use it. A uh, rough uh, idea of it is basically if I finish a set and I can't, I can't bench the bar anywhere and I get stuck and I fail, that's an RPE of 10. That was the maximum rate of perceived exertion was 100%, 10 out of 10. If I can f actually grind it off and, and get it, then I'm, it may be 9.5 or so because I got the reps. It wasn't a failure. It wasn't 10 but it was like a 9.5 or so if i can get it but i don't want to go for another one uh, though i think i could maybe have had one more it could be a rp of nine and so on and so forth and it, it's not straight like you don't necessarily have to use those blocks um to uh, set your own rp you can figure out your rp by yourself whatever feels like an rp of seven eight nine ten for you is going to feel like an rp of seven eight nine ten for you the problem with rp systems though is that beginners cannot use it because they have no idea how far they can go so <clears throat> only when they're training with a coach an experienced coach that can look at their speed the bar path bar speed everything of that sort and kind of tell them okay this is your rp9 or 10 or, or 8 or something of that sort so i was thinking about making an rp6789910 now how i'm going to practically apply that i'll show you uh, i'll explain it to you guys in a bit um the next thing was 4 and 15 so why 4 and 15 i've never actually been uh, i've been training for like a decade now and uh, i've never really gone for a really high volume program uh, per se like i don't necessarily ever go for 15 reps i don't even remember the last time i went for 15 reps probably like three four years ago or so i generally train uh, between six to twelve or so and for the past two years i think if i've ever done volume stuff i've always been within the eight or twelve rep range uh, for strength i'm always I'm always six or less. Mostly it's five or less for strength. Um, for my own training programs, I'm, I'm talking about my own training programs. Um, so yeah, so that's that thing. So for 4 to 15, the volume base is the, is the volume base that I'm going to have after I figure out my strength. But I'll explain that as we get further into it. Besides that, these are just rough notes that I made for myself. Um, there's a Dante. Dante Trudel is another bodybuilder um, that basically has his own method of stretching, which I was I did use it like about three, four months ago. I didn't necessarily see any benefits or any losses. Uh, that said, I'd never really stretch anyway. So if it was a part of my workout, I might actually put that in there. I haven't decided about that yet, but this was just another rough note that I made for myself. Um, so initially, I was thinking about making a four to five days. I was thinking about having a five day training, uh, training split. Um, when I say a split, it wasn't necessarily like uh, bench and biceps on one day or back and triceps or something on the other day or something like that sort of like leg shoulders. I, I never uh, split it like that. And again, I'll give you like the backing for why I never do that thing. 
uh, but I cannot um, go for more than four days in a week. I really don't like training more than three days in a week, actually. But uh, but I, I do when I'm working hard on something. I start working like four days a week. I really don't like uh, going to the gym more than four days a week. I just don't like living inside the gym. I feel like you should get in there, do your work, get out, get the results, and get out. Um, I also never like training two days in a row. So Friday and Saturday. The only reason I'm training Friday and Saturday in a row is because um, Friday is my work plus school uh, plus my training day. So I, I go home, I get to bed, I can relax and everything. I don't have to worry about work or school on Saturdays um, because whatever I do. On on Saturdays basically starts off much later in the day and I have enough time to train. So Friday to Saturday, the fourth day isn't really that bad of an issue. As you can see, there's an empty slot here and an empty slot here because I'm not trying to program too much stuff into my uh, Saturday slot. So there's three different uh, tiers to this training program that I made. So this is the, the red is the bread and butter, the basics of everything. Like you need to have your basic compound movements in there. Uh, what I'm using for myself is actually um, the GZCL method. Uh, you guys can Google GZCL and you should, find, you should be able to find what GZCL is. A uh, really short, really short method. Um, it's like an advanced method of novice to, someone that's going from the novice stage to the intermediate stage. It's programming for them. So so these moves, the, uh, the OHPDL squat bench, delta OHP bench squat, bench squat again. One of them is, the first one is always high intensity. Uh, so uh, more weight, uh, lower reps and higher and higher volume. Like, well, not higher volume, but um, more intensity and lower reps. And the second one is really volume work actually. So it's it's lower intensity, but higher volume. So overhead press uh, for five sets of three. And the last one's gonna be an arm wrap. This one's gonna be three sets of 10. Same thing here, five sets, three, three sets, uh, three sets of 10, five sets, three, three sets of 10. And uh, it goes across the board like that. So every single one of those moves, <clears throat> the squat, bench, the deadlift, the OHP, every single one of them gets uh, an arm wrap day and a really high intensity day. And they also get like uh, volume days as well. Um, so that's that's my basic tier. How that's gonna go up is I'm going to try and up the weight by five pounds every time that I get into the gym. Uh, and if, when I do stall, so if I'm trying to go for five sets of three and I stall at a certain point where I cannot get more than two reps, um, from then on, it's gonna be instead of five sets of three, which is 15 reps in total, it's gonna be uh, six sets of two, which is lower volume in total, which is uh, 12 reps, which is lesser than 15, but the intensity is higher because you're only going for two for two reps and now you're, you're still trying to peak up the weight. So I'm still gonna try and keep adding weight to the bar, like five, five pounds to the bar every time I go in. After that, there's going to be a point where you just completely stall and you cannot add, uh, you can't even do two reps for the amount of weight that you're choosing, but you can do singles. So it's going to go down to lower volume even then. So 15 to 12 to 10. So now your volume is at 10 reps, but you're doing 10 singles. So that's going to be like 30 minutes minimum in itself, if not 40 minutes or so. So the red block in itself goes anywhere from a bare minimum of 30 minutes to let's say 50 minutes or so. After that comes in the volume work. That's your that's your bread and butter down there. Then after that is the volume work is where all, all of the body building stuff is, is going to take place. So this training program for myself uh, is made for uh, my lagging body parts, which are my arms, my, my like well, both biceps and triceps and my pecs, which is something that I want to work on for this this bulk uh, in particular. Uh, I did work on the same things, plus I added in, in some delt work last year and I did make significant improvements in my opinion, uh, but they're still lacking and I do want to work on these things. So that's what this training program for myself is on. So uh, <clears throat> now there's now there's things about um actually should I go in deeper now or uh actually let me hmm, let me let me figure this out. Yeah let me kind of get in a little bit deeper. I'm gonna have to keep bouncing back and forth actually so let me move this up here just because I know you guys won't be able to see that. Uh, let me confirm this. Yeah, so you guys should be able to see this, right? So the way I'm, I'm working on these things, so the first set, the first tier is the red one, the red block. The second tier is the blue one, which is the higher volume work up here. And then the third tier, the green one, is really stuff that's not really important, but I'm adding it in there just to kind of have some minimum effective volume, just so I can, I, I won't lose my gains, basically. Um, I don't even have calf work in here and or hamstring work in here because the, I just have such tiny calves that it, they just cannot get detrained. So I just don't have them in here. I might have them when I actually start working on them at some point. Um, okay, so the final uh, volume, just because the volume is gonna be high down here, I've actually added uh, supersets for some of these things. So so these two things, I'm doing them by themselves. Like the arm and the pec work, I'm doing them by themselves. They're not they're not supersets. Uh, but the final one, arm for triceps, uh, delt work and ab work or triceps, pull-ups and ab work once again, those are gonna be supersetted. Uh, go ahead, finish off a minute, go for the next one. Next exercise, go for a minute, go for the next exercise for a Minute, wait for a minute and then keep rinsing and repeating from there. So the principles behind this program design, so I'm gonna have to go back up here again, but let me kind of show you where we're going uh, with this thing. The reason why I'm hitting these things, like I'm hitting uh, arms, if, if anyone looks at it, I'm, I'm hitting arms four days in a week, which seems insane, um, but I'll tell you why I'm, I'm doing that. Same thing for pecs, I'm hitting that three days in a week instead of four days in a week. Uh, again, seems kind of insane, doesn't it? And arms, triceps, and similar for abs and stuff. 
So the reason I'm doing that is um, pro you, pro the rates of protein synthesis, they spike up after you break them down. Uh, you break them down, they catabolize, then they spike up. That's how you build muscle, right? So when they spike up, they spike up only for 24 hours to 72 hours. Um, and the more advanced you get, the, the shorter that time frame becomes. So at this point, I've been training for nine years, uh, like, a like 10 years now, I think it's a whole decade now. So uh, my rate of protein synthesis cannot last more than 36 hours or 48 hours or so. So I have to hit them every time I step into the gym. So since I'm going Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, that's 48 hours in between, 48 hours in between, and like 24 hours in between here so i still i still like whatever it, it's gonna peak and it's gonna come back down and then when i get this at this point i'm gonna start peaking it back up again so my peak uh, basically my overall uh uh, volume kind of stays higher and and my overall rate of, overall rate of protein synthesis is going to stay higher blah, 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 i can't even talk um okay so that's the reason why i'm hitting that much frequency but if you're hitting that much frequency you can't kill yourself you can't crush uh, every body part every time that you're hitting it just because you're hitting it with that much frequency you're just going to be overtrained for if i if i crush myself on monday for arms and pecs i can't do anything i can't bench i can't do arm work i can't do any more pec work on wednesday and i can't definitely can't do it on friday and so on and so forth so you can't crush them all so i'll show you how my periodization in terms of volume and intensity is going uh, in a little bit then you have uh, minimum effective volume and maximum effective volume. Um, these are these are terms that are uh, introduced by uh, Dr. Mike Isertal. This guy's another strength coach, uh, does amazing work. Uh, he's from Juggernaut Training Systems or, and or Reactive Training Systems. Renaissance periodization, they, all of these things, they're, they're all kind of similar. They, all, all of these guys all work with uh, one another. So he's the guy behind Renaissance periodization. So he's the guy that, ga that gives you the idea of minimum effective volume versus maximum adaptive volume. Uh, I'm gonna show you how that works as well. So <clears throat> according to him, um, the minimum effective volume is somewhere around like eight sets or so per week for biceps. Uh, and uh, the maximum adaptive volume uh, lies between 12 to 20 sets. So as a person uh, like myself that hasn't ever done higher volume, I'm not gonna be jumping up to 20 sets just because it's gonna be too much for me. So my arm volume is four sets on Monday, four sets on Wednesday, uh, four sets on fr uh, Saturday. And then the reason I, I have something on Friday is not it's not because I'm actually gonna be hitting or crushing my arms on Friday. It's really just activation work. Like just I'm just using some weight, like using some resistance and trying to flex my arm against the resistance just to kind of have that mind muscle connection kind of a thing. Why I need the mind muscle connection, I'll, I'll link a study for it because it's been proven that for upper body moves, you can actually get more hypertrophy out of the same amount of weight, same amount of effort that you're doing uh, with the mind muscle. If you're going through the mind muscle connection fix instead of just thinking about getting the weight up. So I'll, I'll uh, link that study for that thing or have a picture of it or something when I finally get to this video. So that's the reason why I'm doing arms every day, but I'm not necessarily crushing arms every day. I'm going for like four sets of 15 or so. And it'll give you even more uh, details on how my periodization is going to go, how my intensity is going to keep cycling as I keep moving forward. Besides that, so that's minimum, uh, that's minimum effective volume, max maximum, what is that? Most uh, uh, maximum adaptive volume, right? So same thing for a bench. Uh, so I have bench work in here as well. So here's the other thing. So I had to figure out this bench stuff. Now I'm subscribed to mass as well. I forget, I forget what the, uh, yeah, I actually forget what the name of the, the full form of mass is, but basically Greg Knuckles, Eric Helms, and uh, Mike Zordos. These three guys are absolutely brilliant, absolute geniuses. They work in this field up and they have ev they know pretty much everything and or bring us the science of everything to do with building muscle, uh, losing fat, getting your cardiovascular output up so that you can build more muscle and lose more fat and you can improve your, your powerlifting numbers if you're in, into that as well. So having uh so going through one of their articles for this uh, last month's mass subscription that I'm subscribed to, uh, they go over like an article that mentions you have to look at you don't necessarily have to calculate the, the volume in particular sets reps volume max weight everything you, if you you can get away with just counting the number of hard sets instead of looking at how much volume you had in terms of reps in front of that so uh the reason i even mentioned that is on bench on bench day on wednesday i have three sets over here five sets over here that's eight sets in my tier one so i already have eight sets of bench or pec work oh, that's directly affecting my pecs as well right so i have to i have to take care of that thing in before and i have to account for that volume as well uh, before i add uh, external volume on top of that so the external volume that i've added on top of that is four sets of uh uh, benches, uh, dumbbell benches on Monday, three sets of incline crossovers on Wednesday, and three sets of incline stuff on Saturday as well. So that's four, three, three, ten. So ten plus eight is eighteen sets, which is again within the maximum adaptive volume. I'm forgetting the exact details. I think it's like twenty to, I don't remember twenty. No, not twenty. Sorry, it's like fourteen to twenty-four or something of like that sort was the maximum adaptive volume according to him for chest. So I'm I'm trying to fall within that range, and as time goes on, I may increase the amount of uh, volume that I need for that as well. Um, triceps, just two sets, two sets, two sets, just because I have bigger triceps, my triceps, are, my triceps are dominant, but just because they are part of the arm and I am trying to grow my arm, so the whole circumference does my, uh does depend on the tricep as well. So I'm adding in some tricep work on, um, in between that stuff as well. These are other things that I'm just adding in for maintenance, like I already mentioned before. So we went through the protein rate, uh, protein synthesis and the reason for the, such a higher frequency. We went through the MEV and MEV by Mike Zertel, so to show you why I'm getting that much uh, frequency and, and how my, my volume is being distributed throughout the entire day. 
Uh, the volume, okay, so why I had that much volume in the first place? Why? Because volume is the main driver, is the primary and kind of the only driver that you can control for strength and hypertrophy. Now, if you're looking for a max bench squat deadlift, you still have to do more volume uh, in terms of work to actually be able to produce like a, a one one rep max out, output at the highest level that you can. Same thing for bodybuilding, uh, the more base volume that you do and the more volume that you can keep on accumulating, the bigger your muscles are gonna get. It just, volume is the main driver for everything. I'll try and link as many studies as I can uh, as I can for it as well. But if you just Google volume, driver, hypertrophy, strength, you'll find work by James Krieger, Brad Schoenfeld, Greg Knuckles, all the, the, the mass subscription, every single one of these guys, everyone's been harping about volume forever. Daily inbuilt order regulation. So the, the basis of this program was actually, um, here's, well actually, you know what, Here, here's where, where it is. So let's see, new progress overload, it's my muscle connection. Okay, that's a different thing, that's a different thing. Okay, perfect. So <clears throat> now I'm gonna uh, touch on all these points, four, five, and seven for me, which is daily inward order regulation, progressive overload for each block, and smartly designed failure training in this table right here. Um, which table is kind of easier to see, I guess. I guess this table is a little bit easier to see, I guess. So let's move on to this one. <clears throat> So how my intensity is going to fluctuate or uh, vary every single week. So this is my weekly training program, right? But I'm extending this up to five months and every single month is, is a certain block in itself. I actually, well actually every block is actually five weeks because I have a deal or week as well, which isn't mentioned in here uh, as of right now, I think. So the intensity, you can go for one of these two things. So I started off with RPE, but then I just recently, like two days ago, watched a video with uh, Mike Isertel where I had completely forgotten about reps and reserve, which is probably a little bit better of an idea of how how and or when to stop because RP is something that once you finish the set you have to go back and quantify how much do you think that set was worth like do you think that was an RP 8, 9 or 10 reps and reserve though you can actually get the reps and reserve when you're actually doing the weight as long as you've been lifting for a decent amount of time again a beginner may not know how many more reps he has left in the tank but someone that's been training for a long enough time two years minimum if not three or four is going to know okay i could actually do two more reps after this or three more reps or four more four more reps so that's that's actually a better driver uh something a better measuring stick uh, really that you can use that than rp but originally my idea was week one you go for rp of seven just because you're accumulating you're, you're getting used to the new training program and getting into it so you go for like an rp of seven for every single set every single set that you try and go in for an rp of seven you use the weight that you need to be able to hit an rp of seven for four sets of 15. so if your first set may be 50 pounds for any ex exercise or so after that for to hit like an rp of seven then after that 15 maybe a little bit heavier so you go to 45 or 40 or so and then you end up at like 30 or 25 or so basically you you can reduce your volume uh, the intensity if you need as long as you can hit the rpe of seven so your overall rpe should be seven you shouldn't be thinking about failure training or anything of that sort so rpe of seven week one the next week you're trying to hit an rpe of eight the next week you're trying to hit an rpe of nine fourth week you're trying to hit an rpe of ten and then you deal it for a week which is going to be rpe six so that was my initial idea, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But you go like seven, eight, nine, ten, deload, and then go back in again, seven, eight, nine, ten again. Now the way that this becomes better because of reps and reserve, and the whole reason I had this and I modified this entire program to use reps and reserve instead of like RPE. Week one, you try and keep three reps in the tank every time you hit every single set. Week two, you try. And, now we're talking about the re by the way. When, when I say every single set, I'm not talking about the first block at all. This this only depends on the on the blue exercise that we have down. Well, actually, it depends on the, these ones as well, but they aren't really that important. But down here, everything besides the red. So the blue and the green are included in all of this stuff, right? So the reps and reserve. So the week one, you're trying to keep three reps in the tank for every single set that you go for. But again, you're trying to hit 15 reps at whatever weight you you pick or you select. Week two, you try and keep two reps in the tank, two reps in reserve for every single week. Uh, sorry, for every single exercise that you do. But once again, you're going for four sets of 15. That's four sets of 15 is across the board. You're trying to get as much volume. You're trying to accumulate as much volume as possible uh, without going uh, too overboard. So week two is going to be reps and reserve of two. Week three reps and reserve of maybe one or so if you want and then the last set actually yeah i think i should write that in there reps and reserve for one for week three but the last set that you hit you go for failure so every single one of these exercises so i'll give you an example right monday if i'm doing like bicep work with uh, something for brachialis uh, with the rope exercises is, is what i programmed in so the first three sets i'm gonna hit for 15 i'm gonna try and hit uh, rep, uh, keep a rep and reserve for one, uh, one or two or so but as of right now we're thinking about one and then the last one you're trying to hit uh, go for failure so whether you hit failure at 15 you hit failure at 12 or you fit, hit failure at 17 or 18 it doesn't really matter as long as you hit failure on the last set of that exercise then you go for the dumbbell benches but you don't go for failure until you hit the actual fourth set of, of failure for benches same thing for triceps and everything and so forth so basically your last set i mean week three has to be the one that goes to failure week four week 10 you you give the body you, you acclimate the body to how failure training works and you're going to try and overreach uh in this week in week four so week four your last set is a drop set so you get your failure and you, you and then you go beyond failure basically a drop set so start off with let's say 50 pounds or so try and crank out uh, 18 reps or 20 reps or so after that go for 40 well not 40 maybe like 30 or so and then try and cr crank out like six seven eight more reps and then go to 25 and then keep on going keep on going until you can't do anymore and that's again the last set once again so you're going over over failure you're trying 
go beyond failure, which is otherwise well as overreaching. And that's the reason why after you finish that on week three and four, which is going to be really high intensity, um, then you use week five to deload. Now, in terms of reps and reserve uh, deloading, I don't know, you could probably keep like five reps in the tank or so, but it's it, it's really hard to figure out how many you have like five reps in the tank. So one of the other ways that I try and uh, reduce my, uh, or basically I, I, I reduce overall volume uh, is I reduce both um, intensity and, and volume. So you can keep intensity same if you want. In this example, I've kept intensity same, but you can reduce intensity as well. Like you can reduce, when I say reduce intensity, I just mean you can reduce your weight as well. But in this case, so I go for, let's say if I've always been hitting like 100 kilos or so, I'm just going to go, uh, if I've been hitting them for five sets of five reps. So I'm gonna go for 100 for four sets of four reps. So that's like 80%, 80%, which is gonna be 64% of my initial volume. So I, I am going only 64% of the volume that I was going before, but my intensity is still the same. If the intensity is that high, then you can actually reduce the intensity as well. The point is basically you stay 50% uh, plus, but you don't try and go like 75 or 80% plus because then that just becomes like a working beat. So you're trying to say, stay between say 45 to 70% or so for your deal so that's how I've been uh, practicing my intensity uh, cycling in this and my periodization for intensity in this training program. Now, after all of that, how I'm thinking about this helping me with bodybuilding, but basically how I'm changing my physique and my structure. The first month I'm going to try and uh, recomp. <clears throat> so I'm working on like once you get motivated and you start working on your diet and everything else as well, right? So I've been working hard in this training program. So I'm recomping in the first month. I'll see if I get some progress or not. If I get some progress, I'm going to continue recomping as long as I keep on getting progress. If I don't get progress uh, through my recomp, I think at this point I'm at like 17 to 18% body fat. I haven't been under 15% body fat in like a year and a half to two years or so. So if I cannot see myself getting lower, in like a month from now, I'll go for like a mini cut, maybe two weeks to four weeks max um, before I can start uh, going into my muscle, losing muscle, but like basically just try and get some fat off just so I can get some more insulin sensitivity. If I can get under 15% in that one month, then that's great. And then I'm gonna go back into my bulk again. So if I, so here, th this table basically just means recom, uh, try a recom first. If it doesn't work, then go into a cut, then go into a bulk and then bulk for like two straight months once again, and then finish off with the cut once again. But again, that is, is just going to go. If I, if I do well with my recomp, I'm just going to keep on recomping. If I, if I haven't gained too much fat by, fat by the end of uh, month four, I'm just going to keep on bulking once again. So that's the idea right there. Um, let me just try and once again, go back through the, uh, the things that we may or may not have missed daily inbuilt regulate auto regulation. So <clears throat> where this comes in is, at this point, I just made this entire program in a vacuum. I'm just assuming everything is gonna be good, but like my life is gonna be amazing. Things aren't gonna get any more stressful than they already are, which, which are already pretty stressful. So, but that doesn't happen. Obviously at some point or the other, you're gonna get stressed because of something. And when something else stresses you, you can't perform your weight training in the same way because your life is way more stressful, right? So the whole point of this thing is that it has inbuilt auto regulation because even if, let's say you did, 40 kilos or or 40 pounds or so for four sets of 10 last week uh, for like an RP of seven or so. And this time you're supposed to try and hit it for like an RP of eight. But this time you're trying, when you try and go into the gym, you figure out that the same weight, 40 pounds, and we try and hit for four sets of 10, you can only get to like seven or so, and it already feels like an eight. So you know that you're supposed to hit an RP of eight. So that's just a bad week for you. So just hit an RP of eight. So you're still going off of what you're supposed to be going off of but not trying to hit like imaginary numbers that you put in your logbook when you started off the program. Like the program has to adapt to how you and your body is doing as, as time goes on as well. So that would be daily inbuilt auto regulation right there through their RP and reps, reps and reserve uh, method. Besides that you have uh, progressive overload for each block. So yeah, so once you finish off this one entire month block, right? Once you figure, figure out this entire month of block, um, you, the next training cycle that you go in, you now have heavier and higher weights uh, and more reps, basically just more volume than before. And if you've deloaded this right, you made the adaptations over all this time. And when you deload right, you should be able to super compensate and be able to get back in there once again for the next month of RP 7, 8, 9, 10, and be able to go up higher. So this time your base volume is going to be higher on which you're building up and that that cycle is going to keep on repeating and repeating and repeating. So you have progressive overload going on for each block as well. Mind muscle connection, like I mentioned before, I'm just gonna give you like a link of why that's important. Um, smartly designed failure training. So yeah, so another one of the things in mass was, um, this is probably a month ago, two months ago or something, one of these one of these issues was basically try and stay away from failure training because once you go for failure, you, you end up building so much fatigue that that fatigue is not going to go away quickly. In fact, it may not even go away until your next training session. So do not go for failure, try and keep something in the tank. So where all of these RP eight nines or reps and, reps and reserve basically come in. You wanna hit, you wanna get into the threshold where you're making progress to stimulate uh, protein synthesis, but you don't want to destroy everything and annihilate it. 
and it takes you forever to recover because we grow bigger and stronger when we recover, not when we're actually training. So, so stimulate, don't align, annihilate. I don't know where I read that text or that statement from, but that was one of the best things that I've ever read. Um, that's pretty much it for this. I've already gone through every single exercise. If you guys want to actually I'll quickly, quickly, really quickly take you through my exercise selection, why I'm doing this. So overhead press. So the reason I'm doing this is I haven't done the main movements in a pretty long time. Like my last program that I've run for eight months, I didn't have any of these programs. So uh, the, these moves, I bought them in and then I took them out back out again. So this one, this training program, I actually have the basics and I'm going to keep on improving my strength as well. Um, why well, I'm going for these ones. Um, so I haven't actually trained my brachialis in my last training program. So I'm actually going to try and train my brachialis because my, I'm trying to train my arm to make it bigger. The brachialis lies underneath the bicep. If, if that goes up, the peak of the bicep goes up and there you go. Everyone's a winner. Well, basically I am, so I'm happy. Um, overhead cable curl. I haven't done that. I didn't do that in my last training program. So I, I chose that one as well. Basically, uh, um, Cable on that side, cable on that side, and you're trying to flex in. Basically, uh, you're trying to basically just do the bodybuilding pose, but you flex in with the with the uh, cables on both sides. This is basically activation stuff uh, for both the biceps and the brachialis. So this isn't actually an arm day in itself, but more just activation stuff. This is uh, an idea, an example that I got from Jeff Cavalier, who's a freaking genius. This guy is an absolute genius. Um, I will be linking his video as well, the one that I actually got this idea from. But yeah, the, the first day that I even just tried it, I didn't even work out my arms and I had the sickest pump when I did this. So it's, it, w w he's onto something basically. So I'm gonna be using that thing to cue how to fire my biceps when I'm actually doing bicep work. And then barbell curls, I actually don't like doing uh, free weights when I'm doing arm stuff. Uh, and that's a completely different uh, theory and science for everything else. But I'm not going to go into that. But just because I haven't done barbell curls forever and everybody loves it. I was like, screw it up. I'm just going to try it and see after so many years how, how high I can get my barbell curls up. So I'm going to try and get that. But then again, it's not going to be that high. But it's going to be four because it's going to be four sets of 15. So... Besides that, uh, I have dumbbell benches. This is four, there are four sets of dumbbell benches. Now I distributed this volume based on this bench and this bench here as well. So because I have no benching going on this day, I have four sets of dumbbell benches on this day. Um, two sets of incline, two sets of decline, trying to hit both. Now, when you're doing a flat bench and you're doing a powerlifting style bench where you have a complete arch going on, you're not you're ma mainly hitting the, the bigger part of your uh, chest, which is your uh, sternocostal fibers, uh, not your clavicular or incline fibers. So since I'm already hitting my decline fibers on Wednesday and Saturday in the, in the beginning, I'm gonna be going for incline stuff on this day and this day as well. Arm tricep stuff, uh, just because I have, uh, why don't I actually add this in there? I guess just because I'm having arms in, in every day just because I'm working on that thing. So pecs and arms, I just have them in because they're there every day. Now, in general, I use those ropes that are connected together through the cable. So, but I do feel like the, it actually does cause some sort of a, an imbalance so I'm actually going for like machines and stuff where I have to get both arms isolateral like going going individual uh, from from each other so that's basically what my my tricep work is going to be it's going to be a little bit different delt work for maintenance pull-ups for volume basically it's I'm not trying to kill myself I'm not really that good with pull-ups the best I've ever had in my entire life has been like 10 or 11 pull-ups Right now it's probably like six or seven or so. So all, all I'm trying to do is like increase the volume of them. So hit hit them for sets of three or four, and then just try and hit as many sets throughout the entire day. So we just, it, the pull-ups are just going to keep on going in the middle of every single thing, like in the middle of my squats, my arm work, this, that, this, that, every single thing. Um, ab work, once again, I don't really focus on it. So I've actually added in some ab work. And because I don't want to waste too much time, I've actually made like a... Uh, a super set of these things so finish one thing go for the next minute uh, wait for a minute go for the next thing wait for a minute go for the next thing and then recycle and go back in again so that's my exercise selection so hopefully you guys enjoy that uh hopefully you guys get like ideas of how to make your own training programs from this thing if you guys have any critiques or criticism about this thing try and make it constructive so they can learn something from it if you have any uh, other things that you want to discuss let me know and i shall see you guys next time thanks for watching It's rain